Yo, Freedom Fiends. What's up, Nima? What's up, dog? Yo. It's your boy, Nima Fiend. Yo, I hear your dog there, Nima Fiend. Your dog sounds smaller than usual. I thought you had a Malmute or something. That wasn't mine. That was a central scrutinizer. Yo, man, that uh, tune we're working on, your new song, Guns for Everyone, or I want to call it... uh, peace on earth and guns for all the kids but we're still working that out um that is that is a dope track man i dig it i feel like it's got fat beats fat beats not just fat beats man a lot more than that yeah it's too fugly cuz fugly cuz man what does that mean nothing just chilling here you sound different what do you mean what's up dog i can hear you breathing heavy too you sound different What's up, man? What's up? Why do you sound different? Are you sick or something? Nah, I got some harsh blunts, man. Harsh blunts? Did you get a new microphone? I did get a new microphone. What is it? It's the Capital Aurora ITS. What's that? Irritable taint syndrome? So, um, what do you think of this fiscal cliff thing, man? And uh, I think they're going to use that to go after the guns. It sounds unrelated, but that's how Washington works, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just hear you breathing heavy, man. What Are you there? You, where, where, what, what's I'm up, enga- I'm engaging. I'm engaging. Yeah? Yeah, in what? Some kind of weird activity. sex act? In activity? Well, maybe. Well, humans generally engage in activity as long as their heart's beating. What kind of activities are you engaging in? Nima. Just chilling. Just chilling. Uh, is it Nima? Nima, you don't sound right. You sound different. Yeah, it's your boy Nima Fiend. Okay. So, um, what's on the agenda? I mean, I, I don't really want to talk about this shooting. Everyone's talking about it. I just blame the state, you know? Yeah, but there was a lot of guns hanging around, too. A lot of gats? <laughs> are, you, are you carrying your gat jammy on you right now? I always have my gat. You got to keep your gat intact, huh? You got to keep it warm. Somebody said Nima sounds like a CIA mole. I'm uh, I'm not really sure what's going on here, Nima. Uh, what's your brother's name? <laughs> I don't think this is Nima, man. I think the central scrutinizer is taking Nima off to the camps, and it's not the good kind of camps. What's going on here, Nima? Nima's safe. Um, what does that mean? Don't worry about Nima. Sounds kind of scary. Nima's safe. What's he safe from? You? He's safe from you. We're keeping him safe. Um, let's see. Uh, don't don't where, worry, Michael. Okay, Nima, where did I meet you? At home. At whose home? Um, at uh, your home. What did we have for dinner the first time you came over? I think it was a lasagna. What kind of lasagna? A uh, cheese lasagna. What no, kind with of, deer what, meat. With deer meat. Not deer meat. What kind of meat? Venison. Nope. It was antelope. That's yeah. It's well. It's in the in the in the deer family. Uh, what did what book did I lend you the first time you came over to my house? Your uh, book on how to make movies. Nope. I lent you Boston's Gun Bible. I don't think. This oh, is that's Nima, right, man. Where's Nima? What are you doing with Hi. Nima? No, Nima's safe. He's right here, chilling. <laughs> Nima, what's wrong? Nima, pull out your gammy jet and get out, gam, jammy gat and get out of there. Okay, who is this? Who am I talking to? What's going on, man? Where's Nima? This is the central scrutinizer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, I've been compromised. Nima's been compromised. I don't know what to do, man. I think we should just end this right now. We're watching. You're always watching. I know that. There's a drone over my town. We established that a few times ago. So have you uh, checked out this Capital Aurora ITS microphone yet? That doesn't exist. I just did a search. What's going on, man? Seriously. Just chilling. You know, this this is a good microphone. It cost me 15 dead Lincolns. Dead Lincolns. <laughs> presidents, presidents, presidents. presidents pre- you are not Nima, man. You're not Nima. You're like Nima doesn't talk in like 1980s hip hop slang and doesn't get it wrong if he did. I don't think you're Nima, man. 
my mama didn't raise no fools. Yeah. So uh, I think the name of this episode is Obama and Bush have both killed far more than 20 kids with drones. I think somebody's getting close here, Michael. Who makes the drones? Isn't that General Electric? <laughs> Didn't the shooter's father work for General Electric? No comment on that one. Didn't you work for General Electric? Aren't you? You are General Electric. You're the general, aren't you? <laughs> no, it's your boy Nima Fiend. This is not Nima Fiend, man. This is not Nima Fiend. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. What's going on, man? What's going on? Nima's safe. Soon you'll be safe, too. Okay, elaborate on that. What do you mean by that? He's chilling with his family. Is his family safe? They're all safe when they're in our hands. Um, I don't, I don't really like where you're going with this. <laughs> Are you watching me right now? <laughs> Yes, and I see that gesture you just made, and that's not very nice. That was at a squirrel out the window. That wasn't at you. What do you we think, squirrel? Squirrel. You own the squirrel. It's a robot. A robo squirrel. Robo squirrel. Yeah. Well, what's what's up with Nima? Where's Nima? Have you seen the Hunger Games? Let's talk about that. No, I haven't. You should see it. It's uh, it's quite a libertarian movie. Which uh, really, it's like. Um, the government is the enemy in it. The government, you know, it's a not too distant future totalitarian, uh, you know, everything's banned. Everyone's poor. It's illegal to feed yourself or hunt or anything. And then like the state takes two kids from each district, each of the 12 districts in America and, uh, pits them in a battle Royale against each other and watches them with cameras. It was actually the lady uh, who wrote the book said that she got the idea while channel surfing in the early 200 2000s she was uh she was channel surfing between some game show and the iraq war and kind of combined them in her head it's kind of like wow. um it's reminiscent of a lot of other themes it's reminiscent of uh lord of the flies and rollerball you know rollerball was kind of the first like reality tv show movie it was like you know a competition where people fight to the death which is i think where we're headed but that's kind of what's happening in, in the Hunger Games. Very nice. Yeah. You should check it out. Although it's kind of surprising to me that like so many people watch this movie and still think government is good. Um, but it's really, it's not a hard leap from this movie to our current situation, you know, from our current situation to this movie it really isn't. Yeah. There's just a few key things that would have to take place and we'd be right there. Yeah, like uh, the fiscal cliff being solved by taking all the guns away. I think that's where they're going to go. You're going to go. Boy, these uh, long silences, man. I guess I just got to keep talking. Are you there? Hello, hello. I think we've lost the central scrutinizer. Is the central scrutinizer there? No, he's gone away. He needs to come back. Yeah. Um, we've completely lost contact here. I don't even know if I'm broadcasting anymore. I think that, uh, I, Ooh, think I got it, dropped there by the central yeah, scrutinizer. Yeah. Well, you are the central scrutinizer. There's somebody <laughs> imitating you on the, on the chat board. I don't really know who it is, but yeah, Ben is not the central scrutinizer, but he did help invent me. So when you worked for the general, uh, Nima, did you, um, <laughs> did you help invent the central scrutinizer somehow? No, I didn't have anything to do with that aspect. Strictly hmm. aircraft engines. That go into drones. Did they go into <laughs> drones? Well, not that I worked on directly. Okay. Well, we're going to go sell some things here. And if we still have an internet when we get back in four minutes, we're going to continue talking to someone claiming to be Nima or claiming Nima's safe or I don't know what happened here, man. It's kind of weird. All right. Freedom Fiends might be the last episode or even segment ever. Yeah. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to 
find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from my other's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seating the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seating The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. Yeah, Freedom Fiends. So, um, I don't know what was going on. I got that other guy off and I quickly called up Ben Stone from the Bad Quaker Podcast and got him on here until we can figure out what happened with Nima. How you doing, Ben? I'm with you, Michael. 100%. Cool. Good. Thanks for uh, dropping whatever holiday festivities you had to come sit in on the Fiends for a day. Yeah, we were uh, we were wrapped up pretty tight here at the old Bad Quaker compound. Yeah. Uh, I've called the ACLU and they said, uh, we ain't going to help you, Fiends. F you guys. Nah, they're too too close with the state. So let me play this little uh, commercial that's been playing on your cast and my cast. Admit it. You hate shopping for Christmas. You do. It's a hassle coupled with a burden, mechanically checking off friends, relatives, and coworkers from your list. You're probably not even religious, but if you are, is buying your cousin some little made-in-China piece of plastic really celebrating the birth of your savior? This holiday season, why buy gifts for friends and relatives? Most of them are status anyway. You should send that money to the Freedom Fiends instead. The Freedom Fiends will use your money to help spread education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. If you want to help provide inoculation from indoctrination, go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post to send your money to the fiends instead. Because buying crap for unappreciative statist relatives won't get your name on the golden floppy disk of redemption. And if you must shop for Christmas, please do it through the Freedom Fiends Amazon link over on the right side of freedomfiends.com. It won't cost you anything extra, and Amazon will save you the danger of holiday drive-by stabbings at your local mall. Amazon pretty much sells everything you can buy on this earth, except for guns and weed. But they do sell the DVD, Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom, so get that for your gun-hating stoner brother or neocon gun nut dad. They'll thank you for it. That's freedomfiends.com. Yeah, that's the Freedom yeah. Fiends. All right. Welcome, Fiends. Yeah. That's not like <laughs> Nima. There's Nima. What happened? Nima's, Nima's back. Nima's I back. heard him. Yeah. What's up, Ben? Not much. What's going on with you? Uh, I don't know. We got a call-in show here if people want to call in. The live studio number is 307-215-5171. That's 307-215-5171. Uh, 307-215-5171. Seven one, or via Skype to username Kitty Feet One. Um, while we wait for that, I want to know how things are Christmas wise at the Quaker Compound, the Bad Quaker Compound. What's going on there? Well, we always have a bit of a conflict of interest around here. I uh, I don't recognize any day. I mean, I don't. I'm not offended if somebody does, but I don't recognize any day as being any more important than any other day. Uh, but yet, everybody in my family loves Christmas and does the whole thing. So I pretty much stay quiet and let them have their fun, and then I just wander around the house and eat, you know, whatever Christmas yes. goodies that. <laughs> We uh yeah we don't do much either. We do like the food though. We we are on the fiends diet, and I have lost twenty three pounds. My wife's lost almost that much, and it's uh it's a great thing. You can go to freedomfiends.com slash blog and search for fiends diet, and you'll get it on there. But a beautiful thing about the fiends diet, other than you know, in addition to the fact that it you know you eat food all the time and lose weight, and it's good food. 
is you get to do what's called a free meal once in a while, which is not, you know, a free lunch. It doesn't mean you don't pay for it. It means you get to throw the diet out of the window for a meal or two. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is that it makes you stay on the diet. Cause if you really, if you never eat anything really, really, really yummy, you'll go ah! and just get off the diet. So this helps keep you on the diet, but it also tricks your metabolism. Cause when you don't eat as many calories for a long time, your metabolism slows down. But if every two weeks or so you gorge on pizza and stateless sweets, um, your metabolism never quite slows down. So you keep losing weight till you get down to where you should be. And it's a good thing. And I had some stateless sweets and I got to say, that is the best thing I've ever put in my mouth that wasn't connected to another person. Yeah, I actually called you when you were in the process of eating that, and it was kind of like you were, you were like, go away, Ben, I'm, I'm, I'm busy right now. I know. It'd be kind of like, you know, if a junkie hadn't done any junk in a while and got a hold of some junk and was like just fixing the first little bit of it, and someone called up and said, hey, let's talk about the government. They'd be like, fuck you, man. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Shame on you, Michael. I know. Shame on you. I said a forbidden word. Do you know about the history of forbidden words? I haven't looked into it much. There really wasn't such a thing as a swear word until about 250 years ago, anywhere in the world. Um, Well, there was thing. uh, Damning God was was bad but you know as far as like anything with bodily functions or whatever and it's kind of interesting universally around the world swear words all fall into the same category they're all either damning god talking about sex um talking about bodily functions or talking about your mother that's pretty much every swear word in every language is one of those four things (laughs) have you learned them all in in every in every language nah I tried to learn um, some other languages, but uh, when I was going to go to Germany with my band Bomb in uh, 1991, oh, that's a forbidden word now, Bomb. I said Bomb on the internet. That made the central oh, supervisor no. perk up. But I was in a band called Bomb, and uh, when we were going to Germany, I got some German language tapes from the library and tried to learn some German, and then I was talking to the guy in Germany, the German guy in Germany that was booking our our thing and I, our, our tour. And I tried, I tried some of it on him and he was laughing at me and he's like, you don't have to learn German, man. Everybody in Germany that's under 50 speaks, you know, speaks English better than you. <laughs> and he was right. Yeah. Don't, but, don't make them embarrassed for you. Just speak yeah. English. Whereas in France, um, a lot of them don't speak English, but even the ones who do will pretend they don't speak English. But then if you try a little French, they'll laugh at you. And then since you tried, they'll speak English with you. They're very ethnocentric that way. I've been told that by a few people. Yeah. So what are you doing for Christmas and how does the state play into keeping it from happening or making it hard? It's kind of weird. We've been trying for weeks to actually get in the motorhome and leave Ohio. And every single time something comes up, something happens, you know, grandkids being born or whatnot. But it's always something, (sighs) some kind of excuse that we can't leave because of it. Yeah. Yeah. What, how does the state play into that? What's the state? Oh, jury w? duty. Yeah, I almost forgot. My wife keeps getting uh, notification for jury duty. She has to hang around and then call them on the day and see if they need her that day. You're a slave. Come in here. You don't have a yeah. choice. We'll put out a warrant for you if you don't. Jury duty is one of the um, few th- intrusions of the state that I would happily take part in. And, um, You know, I'm not going to say any kind of Fiji thing or anything like that. I'm just going to say that I consider it my civic duty as a human to go be on juries for pot cases and whatever they have in mind. And, uh, you know, I I would love it. And I would uh, vote honestly and uphold the law. But they are really slave drivery about it. It's like it doesn't matter if you've bought tickets to Europe and, you know, plan to be out of town and has spent a lot of money to do something. They don't want to let you do that. Yeah, in a, in a sense, it's really about owning you and dominating you and giving you permission or denying you permission. Yeah, I had a really bizarre experience with that uh, in California. The last time I was called for jury duty was when I was living in Agora Hills. And the, 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 the place you go for jury duty is in Malibu, if you're in that district. And it's like my wife and I shared one car. She had to go to work. So I literally had to rent a car to be on standby to go tell them that I couldn't do jury duty in person and it it would have been a six hour bus ride you know buses connecting otherwise to do it 
and they wouldn't let me out because of that. <sighs> Man, that Damn. is messed up. The state. I hate the state, and the state hates me. The Bad Quaker staff has discovered how easy it is to get everything you need for the holidays at Amazon. Everything from the coolest decorations to hangover remedies, and everything from the latest movies and music to poop stain remover. If you follow the Amazon link at badquaker.com, Amazon will give badquaker.com a tiny portion of the purchase. It won't cost you any extra, but you will be supporting this podcast. Thank you. Admit it. You hate shopping for Christmas. You do. It's a hassle coupled with a burden, mechanically checking off friends, relatives, and coworkers from your list. You're probably not even religious, but if you are, is buying your cousin some little made-in-China piece of plastic really celebrating the birth of your Savior? This holiday season, why buy gifts for friends and relatives? Most of them are status anyway. You should send that money to the Freedom Fiends instead. The Freedom Fiends will use your money to help spread education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. If you want to help provide inoculation from indoctrination, go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post to send your money to the Fiends instead. Because buying crap for unappreciative statist relatives won't get your name on the golden floppy disk of redemption. And if you must shop for Christmas, please do it through the Freedom Fiends Amazon link over on the right side of freedomfiends.com. It won't cost you anything extra, and Amazon will save you the danger of holiday drive-by stabbings at your local mall. Amazon pretty much sells everything you can buy on this earth, except for guns and weed. But they do sell the DVD, Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. So get that for your gun-hating stoner brother or neocon gun nut dad. They'll thank you for it. That's freedomfiends.com. Me. Uh, Yo, Nima Fiend, what's up? He's gone. I'm here now. <laughs> he's safe. That was a good answer, man. <laughs> so, um, I want to talk about Anna Kappa Island, but first I want to talk about uh, Twitter. Because if you love Twitter, you love the Freedom Fiends. There's a uh, there's a thing on on Twitter where people you know people tag different stuff, and then it all shows up, and you can search it. And there's one called we can't be friends if and it's hash hash you know pound sign we can't be friends if and it's people posting their you know you can't be friends if you expect me to pay on the first date or whatever crap like that so i posted one that said you can't be friends if you defend immoral actions of the government like you're defending your mother and it kind of went viral on there it's pretty funny wow and and i i, I kind of feel like that like i can't be friends with someone I can be friends with someone if they say, well, without the government, who would create the roads? But, you know, and even if I explain it to them and they go, well, kind of makes sense, but I don't know. You know, I can still be friends with them because there's hope. But if somebody says, if I say, you know, that to somebody of, well, you know, the roads, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, if somebody says, like, starts defending it like they're defending their mother, I know that they are beyond redemption and I can't be friends with them. Yeah, it's just too much pain to get involved in that kind of conversations just to watch them just, you know, get angrier and angrier and and act like, well, they they show really clearly that it's their religion. It's not it's not just yeah. a frame of mind or it's not a way of thinking. It's a it's a fanatical religious belief. Yeah. So you can't be friends with me if you defend the immoral actions of government like you're defending your mother. And I kind of put it in their terms like I didn't say all government is immoral, but I was saying that, but it's like immoral actions, you know, and that would appeal to people who like think government is good because they don't know better, but, uh, you know, they know the government does a lot of immoral stuff. I just don't know where the anti-war leftists went. You know, when I was, a, when I was a kid, all Democrats were voters, not politicians, but all Democrat voters were anti-war. You know, you, you remember that, right? Oh Yeah. They were the really vocal ones that basically took over the Democratic Party in the 70s. Are you old enough to have uh, been available for the draft, or did you miss that? I had to register when I came out of high school, but it oh. was already it had already stopped. People still have to register. Yeah. Did you, did you know that? Yeah. Well, they're yeah. supposed to, but it, there's only you only get punished if you ever want anything back from the government, and you didn't. 
I mean, isn't that how the central scrutinizer found Nima was from his, uh, his address was from his registration for uh, draft. <laughs> that could be. Yeah. I know if, if you ever want anything like, uh, well, I don't know about unemployment, but I know about most of the other things that, you know, government uh, giveaways. If you, if you're not, if you weren't registered, then they give you a hard time. Well, an interesting thing about uh, tyranny is that <clears throat> Eric Holder, who's right now saying we need to rethink rights, and not just gun rights, but he's talking about that, but, you know, rights. <laughs> One of the comments I saw on that thread I really liked was somebody said, he, you know, he was like, after the shootings in Cincinnati, we need to rethink rights. And one of the comments was, did they, did the guy in Cincinnati get the guns from you too, Eric Holder? You know, referring to the Mexican thing. Oh, zap. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he has actually decided, I mean, he, he, someone said, did you, Michael, did you see the thing where Eric Holder's talking about rethinking rights? And I'm like, isn't that what Eric Holder does? Is rethink rights, but uh, he was he was saying that um, what was he? He did something recently where he decided that any government record is available to any government any other government agency without a warrant. And he used to take a warrant for some kind of that stuff, but he basically decided, well, it's the government anyway, so you know, if like the the DEA can get your tax records without a warrant you know just by calling up or even probably just logging Bean on phone. so Bean phone. but basically they're making Bean it to phone. where like everything Bean is a phone. government interaction so Bean there goes phone. the bill of rights Bean and phone. here we got someone named paranoid patriot calling hello paranoid patriot hi how's it going this is nathan frazier i'm just calling in hey what's up nathan tell hey, us what's nathan. on your mind hey uh ben good to talk to you again yeah um I just wanted to uh, bring up a couple of things. Number one, um, a lot of people are pushing for extra gun laws because of this, but they're kind of ignoring the fact that shooting that I know you're not trying to talk about, but no, you can talk about it though. We okay. don't, we don't want to, you can, it happened on a gun free zone and the guy that apparently did it wasn't old enough to buy all of the guns that he bought anyway. So the gun laws didn't even stop it from happening. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of a no brainer to us, but it's not to most people like most people go, we need more gun laws. But basically, the guy was already in violation of two gun laws before he even shot anybody. You know, he was not old enough to own a handgun. Well, three gun laws because he stole the guns from his mother. He wasn't old enough to possess them and he went into a gun free zone with him. But I think what they have in mind really is something to the effect of like possession of a gun gets you life in prison or gets you executed. I mean, that's the only thing that would probably reduce the number of guns owned in America. And I think most people wouldn't get rid of them. And I really do believe that if they do some major gun grab like that, it's going to increase gun violence, not reduce it, because there are a lot of people that are probably just going to start shooting authority figures. I'm not one of them, and I'm not condoning that, but that'll probably be the unintended consequence. And then they'll, a few will get shot and they'll say, okay, now we need to go door to door and forget about the Fourth Amendment and just kick in people's doors and take them all. But they can't do it to everyone who owns a gun. There's 180 million gun owners in this country. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is I was listening to Ben's podcast the other day and he was talking about some of the uh, things that he does on air that he's going to try and stop doing because he got told that they weren't the most professional. And I just wanted to say that out of all of the shows on LRN, um, I think that this show and uh, Bad Quaker are probably two of my favorite and a large part of why I like them is the fact that you guys don't take yourselves so seriously like some <laughs> of the other hosts do. So I think that that's part of the character of the show and I think that that's something that I, that really appeals to me and I, I know that there's a lot of other people that it appeals to. So just weigh that in. Um, there are a lot of people that like the fact that you guys don't take your shows quite as seriously and not not in a bad way i'm just saying a lot of times it seems like uh, some of the other hosts on the network uh deliberately tone themselves down and you guys don't really seem to do that and I, that's one of the things that i really find value in both of your guys' shows thanks i are serious quaker i are serious <laughs> quaker what uh what did hey. ben get in trouble for what'd you get in trouble for ben i missed that oh, oh you didn't get in trouble yeah, it wasn't really trouble, but it was just advice. But Kai and I are chit-chatting, talking, and both of us have this horrible tendency to go, uh-huh, 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 as the other one is speaking. Oh, I like 
I uh-huh. use filler words. Uh-huh. I use filler words nonstop. I've been listening. I listen to all our casts and I listen back to them. I don't notice it while I'm doing it, but I'm like, um, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and and I don't do it so much when Nima's talking, uh, but I do it when I'm trying to think of something and I want to have him not jump in. I'm like. Um. Well, you know, the fluoride in the water is really good for you, and it makes your brain work better, or whatever. You know, I wouldn't say that, but Michael's been taken by the central scrutinizer. He's been brainwashed. Oh, <laughs> all no. of us. Someone of us. dive on him. Yeah. No. All, the- all right. Well, I just wanted to call in and, and voice those two opinions and uh, say thank you guys for doing what you do. Cool, man. Appreciate hey, it. thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right, you guys have a good one. Say worms. <laughs> worms. All right. Cool. That was nice. I uh, I like it when people compliment us. I like it when people compliment us and give us money. I'm not saying he should, but you know, that's really the way to my heart as a podcaster is compliment us and give us money. The way to Michael's heart is through cash. It sounds kind of weird and kind of callous, but it's like literally when we get a donation, even if it's for five or 10 bucks, I'm like, okay, somebody's actually taking an action here and you know, kind of co-signing it. They're kind of saying, I like this enough to send you guys a little money. Cause I, we lose money on this podcast. I mean, we actually, on the fiends, we probably do better than most podcasters. We actually have like, you know, one paid advertiser at a time usually. And, but we spend a lot of money. Like we do stuff. Other people don't like buy really good gear. Although you do that when I tell you to, don't you? Yeah. What's your microphone? What's your real microphone you're using right now? Oh, I don't know that sure expensive one you told me about. Yeah, it's I can't the sure remember the name of it. Sure Beta 57A. It's what I'm using. I yeah, actually nice mic. I actually met you by contacting you and saying, "I love your show, but you need some audio advice." And I do that to all the shows I like, but you're the only one that took my advice. So, it, that's how, it helped a ton, too. That's another way to to my heart is listening to my good advice when I tell you what to do. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon and IMDb. You can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiend's message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Yo, Freedom Fiends. What's hey, up? Michael. What's up, Ben Fiend? Not a lot. Just chilling. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm not doing that anymore, am I? Well, you can chill. <laughs> you can chill. You can chill because chilling is from, like, 1982. It's okay for old white guys to speak hip-hop. If it's really uh, old hip hop, or it's not, it's not all right. It's just common, you know. It's acceptable. Yeah. Whereas, if you're a young hip hop dude like Nima, you'd be quoting the rapper Common, but you don't even know who Common is, do you? I think that's some apartments that are down the street. <laughs> all right, Squirrel Master. So uh, let's talk about Hillary Clinton. So, so what's our president's name? Obama. Uh, Barack Obama went on TV the other day and cried. You know what a lot of people think we're crocodile tears about all these children being killed and the reason they think they're crocodile tears is because that guy kills like 20 kids a day some weeks you know with drone strikes i mean he's he there are 147 pakistanis dead kids dead in uh in one year from his drone strikes and that's just kids that's not everyone else basically what the united states does now is the president has a kill list and if you're on his secret kill list he'll send a drone over He'll say his people will send a drone over and 
find you. And a lot of times those guys, you know, they're trying to evade. So they find them at wedding parties because wedding party people show up and they know the guy's going to be there. So they bomb the whole wedding party, kill everyone at it to get one guy, which is insane. It's, it's really, really insane. You know, even from a military standpoint, because, you know, you kill all those people, they're all going to, their families are all going to turn into terrorists. Their families are going to all swear vengeance on you. And it's got nothing to do with Islam. It's like, I, what I say to Americans is, you know, like gun nut American patriot types who say like, oh, well, them brown people deserve getting killed. And I'm like, okay, you saw, <clears throat> you saw Red Dawn and you cheered it. You know, you, you vowed to defend your, your country on, on your property. What would you do if your daughter was at a wedding party of a friend and, uh, it got bombed by a foreign government and then the go- that foreign government had troops on your your soil you'd be out there shooting them you know so you can call those people terrorists all you want but it sounds like self defense or you know not necessarily self defense but like uh something most 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 red blooded americans probably do if it happened to them the funny thing is you, you know if you look at it from a criminal gang point of view which that's what the government is uh, even the mafia doesn't behave that way. You know, the Crips don't be- behave that way. Families uh, are off limits. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Hell's Angels do not behave that way. It's, it's a pretty bad thing when you realize that that the, the, the worst criminal gangs that we know of do not behave as evil as the president of the United States does. Yeah. And on top of all that, they're now doing this thing called double tap drone strikes. You know about that? Yeah, where they first they bomb the the wedding party, and then when they uh, have a funeral for the people they killed at the wedding, they bomb the wedding too. I'm sorry, they bomb the funeral. Oh no, the double tap is the other thing where they drop a bomb and then they wait a minute until people run in to try to help the people that are injured, and they drop another one. Yeah, like when ambulances show up, which is a violation of uh, what's that rule of war thing that America pushed through after World War II, the Geneva Convention. It is a violation of the Geneva Geneva Convention to target uh, medical personnel or rescue personnel. And they're literally doing that by doing that. It's a funny thing, too, because at moments like that, they say, well, but we're not at war. This is not a this is not an actual war. And then you say, well, why are you bombing this country? Well, we're at war. The United States hasn't been at war since 1945, a declared war. And uh, I was born in 64, and I cannot remember uh very many months in my life when the united states wasn't acting like they're at war with somebody and being war you know (laughs) doing war at somebody i guess they called vietnam a police action yeah and same way with korea and same way with the but then that that phrase kind of wore out because that you know it it got uh it got pushed to the side now we're rescuing other you know other we're we're saving other countries by bombing them yeah uh but they are calling it a war they call it the global war on terror but terror isn't a country, so I guess they can say it's not a war. Well, that's a typical double speak from the government, though. You know, if 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 it's on their behalf, then they'll say they'll use any word necessary. But if it's something that's not on their behalf, then they'll again use any word necessary. They'll just twist the language ra- around to suit whatever they need at the at the moment. Do you know about the phrase "government in a box"? Hmm, doesn't come to mind. Started in two thousand ten. Uh, Af- in, over in Afghanistan, International Security Assistance Force. Now, there's some some 1984 doublespeak for you. Uh, the International Security Assistance Force pacification offensive in the town of Mirage, Afghanistan, involved 15,000 American, Afghan, and British troops. <clears throat> and there was an American general who said, General Stanley McChrystal, everyone knows he is, uh, s- who was the commander of the ISAF, this weird uh, 1984-ish thing, coalition of the unwilling. Uh, He promised that following the offensive, the ISAF would install a government in a box, which basically means, um, you know, I mean, the CIA has always done this. They go kill a bunch of people, say that there's reasons to do it, and then try to rig the elections to get their guy in there. But they're not even pretending with any of that anymore. It's like, you know, we're going to bomb the shit out of you. And then as soon as everyone's done resisting and killed, we have the government ready to put in place for you. We are giving you democracy in a box. We're giving you uh, government in a box. Amazing. I yeah. started doing uh, 
I started looking up some. Well, actually, I just kind of bumped into it. I was on the CIA's website. Really? Just kind of look. I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't do that, man. <laughs> CIA.gov. You find interesting things over there. Well, but, isn't there uh, isn't there a statement? I did that a long time ago. Isn't there a thing when you log in that basically says, "By looking at this site, we are looking at you." Isn't there some kind of disclaimer that pops up? Which I'm surprised uh, they even have to say anymore. They, maybe they got rid of it. They they probably did, but they probably just don't even bother. They look at you no matter what. So yeah, that's kind of like those Facebook disclaimers. Like those are you hilarious, know, man. Yeah, yeah. You're somehow safe if you put these magic words on your Facebook page, and then the government <laughs> can't. They you know oh, oh the government's gonna stop there because you got magic words. I know it kind of it kind of reminds me of like you know little boys who have a tree house and they put up a sign that says no girls G U R L Z or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know? like, 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 Oh, Hey, wait, here's another thing. I've got this constitution. You have to stop right there. You can't come in my front door with your SWAT team. I have a constitution. Yeah. Boom, the constitution boom, boom. that's currently, uh, interpreted by the highest attorney in the land, Eric Holder, as it's constitutional to drone bomb people, uh, who are American citizens without a trial because the Constitution promises due process. And that was previously believed to mean a court of law, but now we are redefining it as the president wants him dead. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that the president, Barack Obama, is that his name? Um, he, Obama. He targeted, his kill list included, and they targeted and killed a american teenager a 16 year old boy who was born in america and remember when uh that guy in florida shot that black kid and the president went on tv and had some crocodile tears and said if i had a son he would he'd look a lot like him right and i'm not even getting into that case because who knows whether that was legitimate self-defense or not because there's so many like conflicting witness reports and everything but the phrase if i had a son uh, he'd look like him. The, the the 16 year old American kid who was born in Denver, who Obama had killed in the Middle East, looks a lot like he'd be like Obama's son. He looks more like him than the kid that he was referring to. Yeah. And it should be noted that the kid wasn't even accused of a crime, much less convicted or anything like that. He was just a kid looking for his dad. He was the son of someone that the United States had drone bombed, that the United States said they had reason to because the guy, I mean, basically was doing something that previously the Supreme Court had decided was free speech. He was publishing some really angry, violent rhetoric on the Internet, but it didn't have specifics of you should target this person at this time in this manner, which has previously been the Supreme Court's uh, acid test for, you know, is it unconstitutional speech? So actually, the guy was publishing, you know, he's basically saying kill Americans and, and uh, suggesting ways to do it, but not specific Americans and not, you know, I don't like what the guy did, but he was basically practicing free speech and Obama killed him, but they felt they had a reason to. But the kid, they didn't even have a reason to. The kid wasn't radicalized. The kid wasn't calling for Americans head on heads on a pike. He was the son of a guy that was on the kill list. You know, basically, I guess they realize when you kill somebody, you know, you create five terrorists. When you kill somebody, the family may grow up and seek retribution. So they wanted to keep that from happening. But they literally killed a 16-year-old kid that hadn't done anything. Literally. Nothing. And he wasn't even there when his dad was killed. There was two separate killings. Yeah, because he would have been killed too. Because uh, they always... I mean, you can't really target a drone to kill. People don't tend to hang out in open fields by themselves regularly in a place that they can be found you know they're always with other people people are social creatures even bad people are social creatures yeah freedom fiends yo worms <laughs> worms yo <laughs> would you like to advertise your product or service to a large built-in audience of liberty loving consumers who truly dig the free market Freedom Fiends is now selling ad space. Slots are reasonably priced, 
but limited, so contact us today. Write the Fiends at talkback at freedomfiends.com. That's talkback at freedomfiends.com. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! Is this Tyler Lindholm calling from Wyoming? It is. What's up, Tyler? You did, I interviewed you on the gumbo because you were one of the uh, Ron Paul delegates from Wyoming, right? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, it was. Tell yeah. us really quickly, short, short version of what happened with that for people who haven't heard about it. Uh, we went down to Tampa, Florida, and the establishment really really put it to us they, they didn't want to hear from you well that would no but before that i should oh, do a, before that yeah should, yeah before that what happened in wyoming what did dick cheney do um, well uh we had <laughs> we had kind of a weird deal that went down we were down at the state convention um down there to vote on uh you know platforms planks etc resolutions and also to elect uh, delegates and alternate delegates to go to um, the national convention and the, the establishment kind of rigged the deal. There was false votes that they did. The, the people that shouldn't have voted voted, um, like the state chairman. Uh, not, not good things. <laughs> yeah, and and speaking of sociopathic murderers from the federal government, Dick Cheney did something. What did he do? Uh, Dick Cheney showed up. It was kind of wild. <laughs> like they, it was it, it was it was kind of weird because they said they, that Dick Cheney was going to show up, and we were. You know, everybody kept expecting a bunch of security to show up, thugs with guns, et cetera. And it never happened. And all of a sudden, Dick Cheney was rolled into the room and got up and gave a speech about how, you know, bombing is good. And it was it was weird. Really? Yeah, wow. It was, it was kind of creepy. But hey, I, I, I do have some co- kind of kooky um, local news as far as Wyoming. Yeah, I, man. You guys probably get a lot, a lot of Wyoming uh, listeners. No, we um, don't. I, well, I think there's like three, man, which suits me just fine, actually, because... <laughs> I want to reach the whole. Lives. I want to reach the whole world except my neighborhood. But go on. Well, it, it, it is uh, relevant uh, nationwide and worldwide. Um, Wyoming is considering adding another ten cents to the gas tax. I don't know if you guys have talked about that. Yeah, the governor who uh, fought, who ran on, I will protect your gun rights, and basically got voted in on single issue. Uh, yeah, right. he's behind it. Right, right. He's a he's a what the Republicans call a rhino, I suppose. Um, but anyways, it's a ten cents gas tax raise, and it's taking the gas tax from fourteen cents a gallon up to twenty four cents gallon uh, uh, a gallon. Um, it's a seventy one percent increase uh, in gas tax. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, not a good thing. Yeah. What? Uh, so that's the facts. What are your opinions on it? Oh, I'm one hundred percent against it. <laughs> I'm against all taxes. But <laughs> what now? What are they I saying? Mean, the money's going to go to. What they're saying is that the roads are falling apart. Roads! Roads! <laughs> Throw the straw man at the argument if you can't win, right? <laughs> There's an interesting, uh, I don't know if you know about the roads in Wyoming. They were all, all the deals for them were built. It was basically built by, well, not built by, but um, there's there's a basically a castle in Casper. It's on, uh, they have their own street. It's this family lives on this compound of mansions in Casper, and they live on Luck Street. Luck, L-U-C-K. And sure. they they are, I'm kind of thinking like, okay, the roads are falling apart, and we need 10 cents more on every gallon, but where did the money go you know what why did why why was this man this series of mansions why that have to be built to build the roads right. it kind of sounds like commie talk but i think it's legitimate <laughs> talk man it's like really okay so there's this family that's made tens if not hundreds of millions building the roads for the past 40 years in wyoming and for some reason the roads are falling apart and we need more money for it why doesn't a family pay for it all right Right. Uh, they're the ones that have been soaking the uh, government pit, or at least on the government pit. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's really, I don't know, I, I think it sucks. Like, the only option, because the government does own all the roads, um, and they're not going to sell them. It's not going to happen. The only only true option I can see, if it truly is a revenue issue, that they do need more money to maintain these roads, um, why can't we go to, like, a lottery tax, where at least it's voluntary? 
Oh, because lottery. Lotteries are sinful. They're gambling. They'll never have one in Wyoming. <laughs> Seriously. Right. Well, no, Seriously. I, I, you know, and I, I hear you. I mean, we've got this huge Mormon, Mormon voting block in the legislature that uh, um, does, does tend to block those type of things. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to someone the other day who was complaining about their treatment at the post office by the employees there, and they were like, yeah, typical government employees. And it was a person that, you know, I, I've, I've heard a lot of people say that, and it's these people are 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 not like us they are status and they vote and they believe the government you know needs to be there for the roads but they but everybody will understand what you mean when you say yeah they were rude they were typical government employees but they don't understand the really really simple idea behind that which is they're like that because they have a monopoly and they don't have to vie for your uh you know for your dollar yeah, and they don't have to vie for your business. That's so such a simple concept, but it's it's it doesn't even get through to the same people who are saying, "Yeah, those government rude employees," and they're they they offer solutions like we need to pass a law to make those people be polite. Man, can you imagine the experience you'd have at the post office if those people were forced to act polite? It'd be worse. <laughs> yes, yeah, would, thank would. you, ma'am. Here's your <laughs> you know yeah good. <laughs> Uh, that's a, actually a really good point. I've never really thought about that disconnect between um, how a lot of people view government employees as being incompetent type of people, and, and truly, most of them are. Um, yet they don't see that same correlation towards how the actual government runs. Yeah. That's a good point. Solid. Well, that's all I got for you, man, is uh, vote no on right. gas tax. <laughs> vote no on the gas tax? Yeah, vote on the gas tax. Contact your Congress critters and tell them they're stupid. For See, my th for my it. theory is, well, I don't vote, but I don't even want to go into all that. And I I do like that you're involved in politics because some it makes it interesting for me, if nothing else, to hear to hear <laughs> that somebody's fighting it and getting quelled. I really believe that <laughs> if if you vote down the gas tax, I think they'll steal it from you in some other way. They'll probably raise property taxes to even more money. You know, you'd lose right. you lose right. either way. All right, man. If, we're coming if back. If this happens, I'll be on there. I will. I will be back on your phone, um, bugging you about another tax. So <laughs> cool, man. Thanks a lot, Tyler. Keep fighting a good yep, fight. Thank you, Worms. Thanks, buddy. Bye. Someone said we should tax squirrel meat. We're not saying the freedom fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the freedom fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! <laughs> Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. <laughs> We're back, Michael. So, Ben Vereen, I mean Ben Fiend, how you doing? Hey, I'm a Ben Fiend tonight, not a Ben, a bad Quaker, huh? Yeah. Well, I call you Ben Quaker. I've explained that why why I do that, but some people probably don't know. It goes back to like uh, punk rock, to, to me being in punk rock bands back in the day. And the way you referred to somebody in a punk rock band in conversation to another punk rocker was by their first name and then the name of their band. Like, um, oh, you know, let's see, Dave MDC was Dave, you know, Dave the singer from MDC. You'd call him Dave MDC. And, uh... You know, Klaus dead Klaus Kennedy's. You call it like if Klaus, the bass player from the Dead Kennedys. You call him Klaus Kennedy, and people know who you're talking about. So I kind of look at a podcast as a band. You know, like we work on this as hard as people worked on their bands. We want it to get out to the world. We want to reach as many people as possible. We're on a mission. You know, we make buttons. Uh, we make T-shirts. It's all it's you, all punk rock stuff. So we even do live tours, or at least I do. Yeah. So you're you're Ben Quaker, and I'm Michael Fien, and Nima's Nima Fien. And you uh, used to be with that wildly popular band, uh, Bomb. Yeah, and uh, I'm kind of glad I'm not in a band called Bomb now. Can you imagine like getting on a plane 
with an anvil road case that has the word bomb stenciled on it now? I think we talked before about that incident in uh, eastern Ohio at, at one of the universities where a kid had a bicycle with a sticker on it that said, this bike is a bomb. No, no, this, were- this bike is a pipe bomb is the name of a yeah, band. Yeah. And he had a sticker <laughs> of that band. Uh, and they called the bomb squad. Did they blow his and bike they, up? They literally blew his bike up with him going, please don't destroy my bicycle. And they blew his bicycle up. I'm sure they didn't pay him for it either. Probably not. They probably fined him for uh, inciting panic or some stupid thing. Man, I don't leave the house. I guess I, get, I guess they could say I'm inciting panic for my house, but I really try not to incite panic. And it's not even if inciting panic were legal, I would not incite panic. I don't like to incite panic. Yeah, that's that's the government's job, polite. man. That's imitating the government. The government incites panic. Yeah, it's not polite. Anarchists are polite, if nothing else, because you never know when one's armed. So you always you should always be polite when you don't know if someone's armed or not. Are you a bearded, a bearded anarchist, Ben? I am. I am actually a bearded anarchist. Yeah, but I don't I'm, throw bombs because I don't that's throw a bombs head, either. If, that's, if that's, you took your whole band and put them all in one place, I couldn't lift them, much less throw them. Yeah. And uh, throwing bombs is imitating the state. And I try to tell people not to imitate the state. I wrote a blog post about how the it's it was called uh, school shootings. I blame the state. And I was basically saying that, uh, you know, people who do school shootings often were told their whole life by the state in public school and beyond that the state would take care of them. And uh, no matter how many laws they pass and no matter how much money they steal, they can't really take care of you as well as you can yourself. And then. People realize that a lot of times when they get to be 20 or 25 and they may not realize, well, we need to not have a state and we need to reduce the uh, demand for it until it drowns itself in a bathtub. But they have a vague sense of somewhere, somewhere someone lied to me over and over, you know, and they don't even know who it was or what it was, but they have this sense of like life isn't fair. And that comes from being promised a pony and, you know, cradle to the grave love from this benevolent, invisible parent of the state. And they realize when they're somewhere usually between 20 and 25 that that ain't going to happen. Uh, they can't be anything they can be just by wishing it. So, and they realize that everything they've been told their whole life is wrong. And most people just kind of go into a life of quiet desperation as uh, what's his name said, Walden pond guy. Um, and, and they just live sad their whole life and sad and angry, but you know, they don't do anything violent, but you know, 1% of 1% of 1% of 1% of those people do something violent and it's lashing out at the state without even knowing it's the state and imitating the state. And I think that the reason people go shoot up schools, people, you know, people say, well, it's a gun free zone. Uh, yeah, it is. But there's other gun free zones where people don't tend to go as much and shoot them up. And I think they shoot up schools because even if they don't realize it consciously, they know that the school is what messed them up, you know? Yeah, absolutely. There is there is whether it's, you know, subconsciously or whether they actually understand it. That is the root of their evil that they have to face their whole life is that 12 years of imprisonment that they were forced to be there and they committed no crime. And yet they are forced to go there every single day. Their their behavior is controlled. Everything that they think and do and say, you can't even go to the bathroom. You can't even piss. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. like jail. Literally. Yeah, it's worse in jail in jail. You're in a little shell have a can. With, a, with a toilet. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to ask. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm really appalled by what this guy did. I think it's horrible. I would I would never go shoot anybody. The only time I'm ever, ever going to shoot anybody is if they come at me with a weapon. Um, I would never go shoot anybody, and especially someone who shoots kids. It's just reprehensible. Um, but I, I think my explanation is one that's never considered, not really considered. And I think it's accurate and accurate. People are appalled by it. I mean, I've had statists saying, like, that's horrible. But then these statists are, like, reading with moist eyes, trying to, like, read these articles on CNN and places like that that say, it says, like, what was behind the shooting? Questions are being asked. What kind of guns did he use? And it's like, the guns he used doesn't matter. And what's behind it, you know, they're looking for, like, did he argue with the principal? Was this principal mean to him? Things like that. And I'm like, that's not got nothing to do with it, man. You're looking for answers. I have your answer, but I give them the answer. And then people think I'm nuts and 
horrible and it's too soon. We actually added a category on the podcast on the, on the blog, the fiends blog of too soon with a question mark. And, uh, that was one of the categories I put this blog post in. Yeah. I like that phrase, especially when I make uh, jokes about Abraham Lincoln and theaters, <laughs> world war two. Yeah. yeah. The Nazis. Yeah. Yeah. I made a really bad joke the other day and then said too soon. It was, uh, it was actually a joke about like using unethical competition to help a friend's business. And I would never do it, but I have a friend that makes these microphones that are like six or $7,000, but they are replacements for old German microphones that are like 50,000 to a hundred thousand dollars. If you can get them. And uh, I told him that he should start a rumor that the reason those old German microphones sound so good is that the diaphragm inside the microphone is made from human skin. Oh no! And then I you said, "Didn't." And then I said, "Too soon." <laughs> oh, <laughs> that might be crossing a line somehow. I don't know. I don't know. Am I crossing a line? I mean, the president kills a bunch of children and then goes on TV and cries, saying, "Oh, we killed a bunch of children." And yeah, I don't even know that it was crocodile tears. I mean, it was scripted, and he was reading from uh, a teleprompter, and he may be a robot, but I don't think so. But you know, maybe for him, that's an appropriate response. And maybe in, you know, when the cameras weren't rolling, maybe he cried when this happened because he doesn't see the disconnect of he's killing kids too. You know, actually, and if you think about it, let's, let's consider it two different ways. Way one, he's faking and he's acting and he understands that, you know, that he's killing people and what this guy did may be crazy, but it's exactly the same as what he does. That's, that's option one. Option two is he is so engulfed in the religion of the state that he actually believes in his mind that he yeah. is a good person doing a good thing. I think that, you know, I mean, I saw a lot of blog posts about the crocodile tears in front of the teleprompter. And it's like, nah, I don't think they're crocodile tears, man. I think I think this guy heard about it and turned to his wife in private and cried. You know, I really believe that he's that disconnected from the fact that he is a child murderer. I really think so. And and others have said this, that that type of a person is far more dangerous yeah. because, you know, the guy in the in the uh, in the school, at some point, he turns the rifle on himself. At some point, he knows he deep in his mind. He stops. Yeah. Yeah. He knows what he's doing is bad. He can't live with himself for it. He'll do something to either suicide by cop or he'll turn the gun on himself. But people like Obama will go through their whole life justifying murdering people. And and they, and they have no better reason than the crazy guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want to point out to anyone listening that if you're new to this podcast, we are not just bashing Democrats. I mean, if Romney had won, we'd be saying the same stuff about Romney because Romney probably would have nuked Iran his first week. Um, and we're not just talking about America. I mean, if we were in England, we'd be doing the same stuff. If we were in Iran, we'd be doing the same stuff. Any government he's immoral they're all immoral they all steal they all kill that's what they do Act, absolutely yeah and we'll be back to talk about how hillary clinton may be a robot after we go sell some things have you swallowed too much of the state's poison the freedom fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl check out the new show the freedom fiends agenda on freedom fiends radio Click on the blue Listen link at FreedomFiends.com, streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast, U.S. time on Freedom Fiends Radio at FreedomFiends.com. The Freedom Fiends agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Badati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. I have LRN's uh, feed r running really loud in my ears right now. And so it's very difficult to tell what I'm saying because I have whatever that is, Quantum 5 commercial or whatever, blasting in my ear. But, um, yeah, anyway, so let me look through my notes here and see if I can just come up with something 
randomly looking at notes that I have for upcoming podcasts that uh, I haven't completed that. Okay, let's see. Here's a... Uh, no, we're going to talk about... I'm hearing voices in the background. We're going to talk about Hillary when Michael comes back from the uh, from the break. So I have in my notes, dealing with trolls. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Every, let's see, Franz Oppenheimer. Uh, now I quote him all the time. Let's see, what else do we have? Zero aggression principle is a moral stance which asserts that aggression is inherently illegitimate. Aggression for the purpose of the zero aggression principle is defined as the initiation or threatening of violence against a person or legitimately owned property of a person. All right, and keep going. Notes from a debate that never took place with uh, uh, with Mark and from Mark at Free Talk Live, Mark Edge. And I need to get back in touch with him and yeah. set that back up. We started to have a debate on whether voting was yeah. immoral or not, and we had it all lined out. And I had like a really busy day that day and blew my brains. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it like Don't that. I blew that. my brain function out by having a really busy day. And then I got on the on uh, on what did we use Skype? I think I think I got on Skype with Mark and we started talking and I just could not figure out what I was talking about. And then Mark lost his connection and the whole thing fell apart. So I need to get back with Mark and and set back up that election. I mean, that debate on the election. election. Although, you know, now that we're past the hype of the election, uh, it's not it's know, not so it's important not timely, to everybody man. like it was back in November. But maybe yeah. it, it might be easier to get clear thinking. You know, it's kind of like um, right around December 7th, if you start talking about how, you know, FDR knew about uh, yeah. Pearl Harbor before it happened too soon. Some people get really upset about that. But if you have the same conversation with them in June, they'll actually listen to what you have to say. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe, maybe uh, in a month or two might be better to have that debate with Mark about voting because that uh, it, it might allow people to have a clear thought, uh, a clear mind and not be all hyped up in the emotions of voting for their, you oh. know, to save the government from the government or whatever. Yeah. Let's see what other notes I was kind of surprised here. Tyler. There are almost 7 billion Ty people. I'm, can you only hear Only about 6,000 people actually rule can't the hear world. Me. This is from a thing called, a book called Superclass by David Rothkopf. Rothkopf? Um, yeah, anyway, um, my notes on that mention that conspiracy theories are unnecessary. If you just look at the numbers, about 7 billion people and about 6,000 people actually are in positions of, uh, of leadership. How many? So, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot for, uh, I just dropped into listening. Ben, can, can you hear me? Oh, I can now. Okay. How many people? <laughs> We're about to go back live. I think we're live, so um, you can stop filling space if that's okay with you. And yeah, uh, no problem. We are back. We're back on the Freedom Fiends. Yeah, Ben was filibustering while I was pee peeing and watching my wife make uh, Mrs. Dean's ginger toffee white trash cookies. We took the word white trash out of them because so many people like them that we had to clean up, clean it up to. Uh, to give the recipe out to friends and co-workers but that's the full name is mrs dean's ginger toffee white trash cookies and i just posted the um i posted the link for it in the fiends show note in the fiends uh fiend fiend chat and i am going to post it in the archive on the fiends blog on uh, not, the, not the blog the the blog we have the fiends podcast site i will post it they're really good, man. They're so good. They're like uh, they're like drugs. You know, if I was <laughs> if I was really nice, we'd uh, we'd like sell this uh, recipe to Jillian for Stateless Sweets. She'd give it to her. If she called it that. It'd be good. My wife makes yeah. a, a, a my wife makes a bean dip that we uh, all around all of us around here call it crack dip because she'll make this this multi layer bean dip and people just fall on it and just devour it. You can't stop eating once you yeah. try it. Yeah, yeah, yep. These are uh, these are like drugs, as are stateless sweets. There ought to be a law, man. There ought to be a law against stateless sweets. That's my comment. They're so good. <laughs> <laughs> so Hillary, 
was that now this is unconfirmed. This is not I'm, robot. I'm not getting this robot <laughs> <laughs> robot <laughs> robot. I'm not getting this from mainstream media, but I heard someone say that she was partying pretty heavy and she went into, uh, you know, to have her little moment away from everybody where she was going to, you know, tr- kind of Ralph up what she'd overdrank. And she got and she pooed her pants. It, she slipped and then smacked her head on the on the tank of the toilet. And that's why she has a concussion. That's why she can't uh, testify before Congress on the murder of the uh, of <laughs> so the, of day the CIA. After, the day after the child murderer in chief is crying on national TV, Hillary bumps her head on the toilet. I mean, this sounds like Jersey Shore. It sounds like a reality show. And somebody said that we need to vote them off the island, but I don't think we can. So. And, and that's totally unconfirmed about hitting her head on the toilet. It's just something I heard somebody say. It, it could be wrong. I heard she pooed herself. I heard she had the squirts because she had a stomach flu, right? You get the squirts when you have the stomach flu. And then she slipped on the poo? No. She slipped, squirted in her granny panties, and then uh, bumped her head. Are we trying to get droned? I mean, really? Oh, man. You know, I would bet I would bet that whoever's listening from the central scrutinizer is probably laughing right now because they're probably a Republican. They, you know, they probably have been in, you know, they they the low level guys are the new ones, the Democrats and the ones that have been in since Bush are probably Republicans. And, you know, I, I would hope that the fiends and Ben Quaker are of a high enough level of we need to watch this, that they would give it to one of the older guys, the more experienced guys. And they're probably Republicans who don't like Hillary. And they're probably laughing their butt off. I think that's the problem with using anything but computers to do this kind of vetting is what if we actually convince the guy, some of the guys, you know? Yeah, I would I would be a little scared. Well, you know what? Uh, there's an economist who was uh, working in the Soviet Union as an economist and stumbled across Ludwig von Mises's work. And he, he basically and did the equivalent of the torrent box. He basically saved them for history. Yeah, and he was like, uh, we have to learn what this evil capitalist was saying so that we can be able to combat it if, if anyone ever you know, tries to say these things. So he was able to collect all this Mises information, and eventually he defected and came to the U.S. and escaped the Soviet Union. Now he's a, uh, he's a Austrian economist. Yeah. Is he alive? What's his name? He is. I can't remember. Uh, Yuri something. They're all named Yuri. You know, that, Yuri. That's what I hear. Or Sven. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm friends with him on Facebook. That's terrible, isn't it? Uh, are you really friends with him, though? I mean, yeah. Facebook. Oh, yeah. We've we've talked a few times. Really? Really? Yeah. Wow. Nice. Nice. Yep. He's a pretty cool guy. Yuri Meltsviv. Meltsev. That sounds Is that right. It? Is that it? Yeah. Could be. He He's at Mises all the time. Well, mm-hmm. sometimes. Somebody said they're getting hurt. Uh, Leo says, Lee, Lee Fo says they're getting get you said get ready they're getting ready to crack down hard on the net all under the guise of copyright and security there's actually some i heard an ad today on lrn telling people not to sign up for something there's some state in america where when you renew your driver's license they strongly encourage you to also like get an internet license have you heard about that i have not it's, you know, some like, we'll keep your identity safe and your identity can't get stolen and the government will protect you kind of thing. Well, I would totally trust that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when did the government ever lie to anyone? And, you know, they always do a better job than private industry would. <laughs> Think of the roads. <laughs> I do. You know, I, I mean, I, I can't be an anarchist because then I couldn't drive on the roads. Yeah. Or, I'd be or a like. Crit. I was told that I wasn't a good anarchist because I didn't use vulgarities in my everyday talk. You know, and I've also had people say you're not a good anarchist if you do swear. So, uh, yeah. But the guy telling you that was a minarchist, wasn't it? Yeah, that's typically the case is minarchists are telling you you're not a good anarchist unless you do this or unless you believe this (laughs) way. And they're telling us what a good anarchist is and isn't. But you got to vote out those gun control people. Yeah, right. Right. So then they can raise your gas tax to help their buddies live in a mansion. I remember uh, about three or four days before the election, uh, my brother, who is a hardcore Republican, actually ah! made this. <laughs> That's he swear, actually, man. 
he actually made the statement that you have to vote for Romney because Obama is a liar. And I, I just, I was so stunned. I had no comeback. Like, oh, that's the reason because Republicans don't lie. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't stick your finger in the light socket because you have to stick your dick in the light socket. <laughs> Amazing. And somehow these things make sense to them, you know? I want to talk about Anacapa Island. Yeah, I didn't know about this until you told me about it, and now I'm all upset about this. Because it sounds like should... the anarcho-capitalist island. It sounds like where you'd go have lip hair. It's Anacapa Island. It's the part of the Channel Islands off of Ventura, California. It's off yeah, California, just... though. You really think the government's not going to own it? It's right off of Point Hainimi, so it's literally in a gun range right where it's sitting. Uh, maybe they would let us all move there. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should take it like uh, like the, uh, the American Indians. Indians did, yeah, with Alcatraz. <laughs> no, or, we shouldn't. Or, uh, we, are not, we, are, we are not saying uh, we're not saying that we should do anything illegal. And, you know, yeah, wounded knee, that's a really good um, example of things that will work out well, is behave like the Indians at wounded knee. We could all show up there on July fourth, twenty thirteen. Why? That would be a that would be a great idea. Is that the? Uh, you're being sarcastic, right? I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> oh, okay. So this thing that the government wants you to sign up for is the cross sector digital identity initiative to increase data security while preserving privacy. And it's uh it's spearheaded by the Grumman Corporation, Microsoft, and doesn't the Grumman Corporation make drone <laughs> they, components? They drones, yes. Yeah. They do. Okay. I want the makes, drone makes for <laughs> I want them to be in charge of my internet security. <laughs> Easy targeting. Oh man. Wow. That is nineteen eighty four speak. To protect online security. Yeah. That is so lame. Square. Hi. Square! I'm Get it I right. the line again. Get it right, old man. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% .9 for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7, 365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. Fiends, the Fiends. This is the Fiends with Ben Quaker today. Hi, Ben. Hey, Michael. How you doing? Good. You ever see the movie Boys in the Hood? No, I did not. It's, uh... It's kind of the, the ultimate movie of a genre that my friend calls the genre of three, three friends, three childhood friends grow up, one, one goes to prison, one dies, and one changes his ways. And it's that kind of movie. Uh, New Jack City would fit that, too. So there's a scene in there where they're talking about the, the crack trade devastating uh, South Central Los Angeles, and one of the OGs in the movie, one of the old, old black men, takes the young guys down the street and points him to a sign and says uh it's something about not being able to read the sign but it's uh you know it's in a different language or something but there's something about he says there's he gives this kind of stirring soliloquy about like you know uh there's crack coming into our neighborhoods and it's it's brought here on planes and i don't know any black guys in this neighborhood that own planes and he's basically eluding that the cia is bringing crack into the neighborhood and a lot of people thought that was ridiculous but uh it actually happened and it's pretty much accepted as fact some some uh brave reporters broke that during the reagan and his administration you know while uh while nancy reagan was riding on a tank for a photo op in south central saying this is the war on drugs 
you know, Reagan's buddies were uh, trading <laughs> cocaine to, to arm the Contras, you know, and uh, you got a little bit to say on all that, don't you, about heroin trade? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, during the break, I was kind of rambling on about that a little bit. I, uh, I was poking around the CIA's website, which is all open to the public. And I was uh, documenting <laughs> in Soviet America <laughs> website watches you. And I was kind of just looking at the CIA's excuse or, or at least one director of the CIA's excuse for um, for, you know, uh, murder most in, foul. Yeah. For how much informed that the uh, President Carter and his administration was about the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And they, they very carefully dance around the topic of, you know, at this time, the CIA was running a lot of heroin out of uh, mostly at that point, Pakistan into through Afghanistan and getting it to Soviet soldiers in, in uh, the Soviet Union and disrupting the, uh, the troops. And that was part of the reason why. Uh, part of the motivation to for the Soviets to go in, of course, the, you know, the CIA is not going to say that on their website, but <laughs> but <laughs> and, and and of course, it's always fun. All you have to do is go to Wikipedia and uh, you look up the uh, the poppy uh, harvest from Afghanistan and you see it, you know, because uh, the CIA actually has the data on the poppy harvest of Afghanistan <laughs> for years and it's kind of like uh, it, it, it's kind of like the uh you know the gold prices or the silver prices or the you know the daily uh the 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 ticker it's the t it's the stock ticker yeah the, and, funding, and it's important funding those wars it's important for them because it's a major source of their of their funding you know I'm surprised yeah. they have that on there why do they what what's the re what's the explanation with it on there well, uh, the CIA tracks that because they track everything, whether it's whether it's important or not. So they track, you know, what the economies are like in every little country and what the I know, population it's, it's, is. It's and, interesting when you go search for like um, you search on the Internet for like uh, gross national product for country or average income for a country or the you know average life expectancy for a country. It always goes to CIA data. Yeah, they know everything. Yeah, I still say that, you know, there was, did you ever recover that one episode that you recorded that you lost when things crashed? No, Kai and I decided that, you know, we, we have that it basic God's situation. Yeah, God's not will? so much. It's, it's just, we can, we can whip off is just turn on the mic and it start happening again. So why put any effort into recovering something that's gone? I think but that you yeah. should do a FOIA request to CIA. I mean, I know they're bugging our houses. They've probably got a recording of that conversation. <laughs> you could just put that up. We've joked about that kind of thing because my wife, this is going to sound really paranoid. My wife and I have discussed buying something sitting here in our, in our uh, office. And, and then, then you then get an ad on, for it on the internet. Yeah. Go on Facebook and bam, they've got an ad for it right there. And it's like, wait a minute. Oh yeah. And Amazon too. <laughs> Oh, but we huh. don't say anything bad about Amazon because Amazon is super cool. And if you click on the links at uh, Freedom Fiends <laughs> or badquaker.com, then Freedom Fiends gets a tiny portion of that purchase, but it won't cost you anything extra. Yeah. And if you do the same thing uh, on the bad on badquaker.com, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Do both. Bookmark them both and uh, split up the amount of money you spend on Amazon between Bad Quaker and the Freedom Fiends Amazon affiliate links. <laughs> yeah get get really kinky and like go from one to the other it's wild it's wild that's what <laughs> that's what passes for kinky when you get to be squirrel watching age I yeah know. when you get to a certain age kinky is bouncing from one uh amazon link to another we yeah i heard I, I read something really funny on the internet the other day it was uh somebody in wyoming was talking about matitsi wyoming which is uh a town of i don't know 300 i mean it's like the backwater is town in a backwater state and it was also prominently featured as a name in the um in the beavis and butthead movie because they go through matitsi and beavis is like matitsi matitsi <laughs> matitsi because he likes the word so um but this guy said i've seen everything i'm sitting in matitsi or i was sitting in matitsi today in an old cowboy bar and two old leathery Wyoming cowboys came in and they were sitting at the bar talking about the drama they'd witnessed on Facebook that day. Now I've seen everything. 
The world is coming to an end. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that, uh, have you seen the meme that's floating around on the internet with the weather forecast for the next so many days? No. And, and the, the one day that the supposed to be the Mayan calendar day, it, <laughs> uh, it just shows like lightning and fire coming from the sky. <laughs> and then the next three days after that are all blank. That's funny. My stepson is getting married on December 21st. Cool. It's pretty awesome. So do you want to talk about the, um, well, I guess we talked about Hillary Clinton. We didn't talk about my theory that she's a robot, you know, kind of Westworld. Like she tipped over because she had a gyroscope malfunction and they had to take her to the underground laboratory where they uh, do all that stuff and bring her back. But, you know, and actually that movie Hunger Games has a bit of Westworld in it because it's like people out in the wilderness, but it's all being monitored and controlled, controlled by these scientists in this bunker, which is very Westworld. Um, so what do you think about the possibility that this Alex Jones idea that like the shooting at the uh, movie theater in, in Colorado and the shooting at the kindergarten or the, the it was actually not kindergarten it's first graders and they said kindergarten and they stuck with it because it sounds scarier. Uh, but the shooting of the first graders in Connecticut still really scary enough to up. What do you think about the theories bouncing around that these are actually like government kind of Manchurian candidates that were, you know, they took the weakest, most influential person they could, drugged them, tortured them, gave them some other drugs to make them forget after programming them to go do stuff. What do you think about that possibility? Well, or that I, saw, I saw a, uh, the very first hint of that that I saw was a really, really bad YouTube, like two and a half minute long YouTube thing where they played, uh, I think it was like, Oh, who was it? Some some popular. Uh, oh, what was that? Band? Someone you're anyway, too, too old to remember. Yeah, yeah. They they played some eighties uh, soft rock band, and they're making these accusations on it. And they're like, you know, copy this. It's going to get taken off of YouTube. You know, copy <laughs> it quick. It's and I'm like, of course it's going to get taken off of YouTube. You're ripping off this band with the with, the, you know, <laughs> YouTube's going to snatch up this. Yeah, so it's quick. copyright violation and slander. You know, and, yeah, <laughs> and maybe fraud. <laughs> But they didn't present any evidence. They just made the accusations. It's like, oh, yeah, well, there it is. It's right there. But, uh, you know, uh, beyond that, it's not something the government can't do. I mean, they they have actually shown, speaking of the CIA, they have actually admitted that they have the capability to do this. They haven't admitted that they've done it. But whether they would or not, they'd do anything, you know. Yeah, I mean, I generally feel like you do about any given conspiracy theory that there's not enough evidence by the people presenting it, and I want more, so I don't necessarily believe that one, but I believe any of them, they do. You just have to look at Operation Northwoods. Yeah. From the 60s, where, you know, the CIA wanted to kill Americans and blame it on the Cubans so they could invade Cuba. And JFK said no way, and then JFK died shortly after for some reason, and no one knows what happened. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Well, we only have uh, 15 more minutes, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. User yeah, recording state changed. <laughs> state change. I wish it was that simple. Press the state change button. State deletion button. Yeah. I had a, uh, a minarchist tell me not long ago. He said, I'm with you. If you could press a button and end the state right now, I would do it. But it's but not meantime, that easy. I have to vote. Yeah. We have to change what we have right now. Uh, I tell you, man, going from minarchist to anarchist was harder than going from status to minarchist. But it was so much more of a relief. I mean, it was really, it was like... Um, it was kind of like 
when a junkie just says that's it you know instead of well i don't want to be addicted to heroin but i'll do it once every fifth weekend or something but then they always end up addicted again you know and you're kind of my state my 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 stateless sponsor you know i call you up in the middle of the night <laughs> man i think i'm gonna vote talk me out of it <laughs> I almost wrote a letter to my senator. I'm I'm mic controlling right now. I took the mic off the stand and I'm pacing. I'm my little <laughs> I'm my little five foot leash here. Yeah, yeah. What's up, baby? My wife is wearing a shirt that says "All governments are corrupt." Come here, baby. Say hi to the fiends. Hi, fiends. How's them Mrs. Hey, Dean's white trash ginger cookies going? Oh, they're going. St- Sticky. 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 This is totally like local radio, like doing a mall opening. Like, oh, and here's uh, Mrs. Dean. How do you feel, Mrs. Dean? How are your cookies today? Cookies are always good. I like Mrs. Dean's cookies. I eat them. Yes, you do until you're sick. <laughs> and then I go, yeah, I'm in a bad mood. Go away. Just like drugs. Yeah. You know, I gave up statism, but there's still a state size hole in my soul that it can only be filled with cookies or stateless sweets. Ben. All right. Michael. Ben. Yeah. Michael. Yeah. We were dealing with dog issues here. Yeah, I think we're back. I think we're doing bad radio here, and I'm going to get talked to because we're back on the Freedom Fiends Live with Ben Quaker. Special holiday edition. Yeah, uh, Nima's off, like, hanging out with a bunch of Middle Eastern people. <laughs> I think the government should look into that. Oh, wait. He's Middle Eastern. He's, oh, he's, at, a, my. he's at a Christmas party, actually. Well, that's good. That's American. Yeah, yeah, it is. Nima's an American. He's not a foreigner. I know. His family are very American, too. Even his dad, who, like, came from Iran, came here, and he's like, I like the free market. I open I think, many I opened many stores. I've known a lot of people that were first-generation immigrants from different countries, and, uh, and they were always, every, everyone that I've ever known who was a first-generation immigrant, I should put it that way, was extremely more patriotic Amer- to More America. American than Americans. I, yeah, I went to uh, the drummer in my band, Bomb. Uh, wait, Bomb. The drummer in my band, Bomb, was uh, Filipino first, first generation. His dad was from the Philippines, and uh, or his mom was from the Philippines. His dad was German, American, Philippine, born in America, but his mom was from there. And I went to a July 4th party at his house one time. It was the only time I ever met his family. It was so American, man. It was more American than like people fifth generation Americans. I mean, it was it was really, really, really patriotic and American. Yeah, Nima's American. Says yeah. the central scrutinizer. <laughs> you know, I kind of want to know who the central scrutinizer is, but who I really want to know who it is is that Facebook profile called the State. Do you know that one? Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's, it's got to be it's some a- anarcho capitalist from. Uh, new hampshire but it's it's totally presenting itself as the state like went to state school works at state prison went to state college and it's all pro state and it's like you know the things he likes are like obama bush drones it's really funny yeah and if you make a statement in about Facebook the state tag him yeah, yeah i know and you tell like, well, I, sh- I shouldn't say him it could be a her there yeah. are anarcho capitalist females in new hampshire too Richard G is now pretending like he's the state too. He says, mm, "Operation Northwoods was my particular pet project. I can't believe Kennedy turned it down." So everyone's no. pretending to be the state. Everyone's false flagging. It's the new thing that all the hip kids are doing. Well, you know, I was seriously accused of being a COINTELPRO agent by Mark Stevens, and uh, you know, some he's he's kind of somebody in the liberty community. I don't know why, but he he says that you know. And when I accused him of that, of, of accusing me in our in our debate on Free Talk Live, one of the only debates they've ever done and probably the last one they'll ever do, we got we got an hour on there with an audience of 100,000 people just ripping into each other. <laughs> it was a beef cast at its best, beef fest. And um, he, you know, when I said, yeah, and you even called me a COINTELPRO agent. And he said, I didn't say that, Michael. I I said, you sound like a COINTELPRO agent, which is such lawyer speak. And he's not even a lawyer, but he pretend he plays one on the internet. But he said, you know, the guy basically said, I'm a COINTELPRO agent. He tried to discredit me like that. And I'm like, really? I think he's a COINTELPRO agent because he is given legal advice that's going to put people in prison or, or could. And he says he's not even given legal advice. That's how, you know, whatever. Lawyer speak, yeah. man. Fake lawyer speak. Yeah. 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 I said it. I haven't said it in a long time. I said it. 
Yeah, dig up <clears throat> dig up the old graves. Yeah, I would meet him at Porkfest and debate him in public, but he said he'll never go back to Porkfest because it was too um, there was too much. What's the word? Um, debauchery. Debauchery. Yeah. Debauchery. Yeah, yeah I mispronounced yeah. it. He was offended by people running around half naked and dancing gay or something. I don't know what. I mean, what else debauchery? What's there? There's you know, naked, half naked people and weed and beer, and that offended him. But you know that's everywhere. That's every, every park, everywhere. If you look for it, or if you look the other direction and you see kids playing with a frisbee, or you see you know families barbecuing hot dog or grilling hot dogs or barbecuing you know, co-intel pro <laughs> agents. Yeah, uh, whatever you look for at Pork Fest, it's there. If you're looking for anarchists, they're there. I mean, most. But of there's it, also you can find most of it at any July Fourth picnic full of Americans. You know. Yeah, it's just the the face of America. You know, we're different people. And you could definitely find all of it at Sturgis. You could definitely find anarchists and and nudity, and especially people you probably don't want to see nude. What is it about like the people that want it, want to be nude are the ones you least want to see nude? That's been my experience. <laughs> you know, because they're older, because they're older, and they're more like when you get older, you're more at like I don't care what anybody thinks. When you're young, you say that, but young people generally really do care what people think. But by the time you're Squirrel watching Squirrel Master Age, you're like, I don't care. I'll let it all hang out. <laughs> and, th and then I do, and people go, Ew, old people naked. Put that away. Put that away. <laughs> you're going to hurt somebody. Yeah. You don't know where that's been. I know exactly where it's been. Yeah. yeah. You were conscious every time? Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know what they gave me in my training to be a COINTELPRO agent. I think they drugged me with something and erased my memory. Well, you know, uh, Hillary had that concussion, and I had lots of concussions. Robot, robot. Robot, robot Hillary. Robot I've Hillary. had lots of concussions, and uh, I've had concussions I think that Obama's, I don't even remember. I, th I think Obama's real and not a robot, and I think he's born in, in America. I think he's born in Hawaii. Is your wife talking about your concussions? But I think I think Hillary's a robot. I really do. <laughs> Not leaks, a very good one, though. She leaks oil when she falls down. <sighs> she must be an early model. <laughs> the T-1000 instead of the T-2000. Yeah. Yeah. She squeaks sometimes. Obama one or two. That's an interesting question. <laughs> Did they replace him with a clone? He's flesh and blood, but he's a clone. Yeah. No, that would have been Mitt Romney. Yeah, I think he's a clone of FDR. FDR's DNA combined with OJ Simpson's DNA. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. So people That's are, killer. That that is that is killer, man. What does that mean? Oh, that's an OJ Simpson reference, how he kills people. Uh of course not. He's totally think, innocent. A lot of people think he's innocent. A lot of black people think he's innocent. There was a song from back in those days that went uh, like blood on the wall, blood on the lawn, <laughs> blood on the Jeep, blood on the hairdryer, blood in the bathroom. Totally a coincidence. And OJ didn't do it. <laughs> it's probably by a white punk rock band, though. <laughs> someone Actually, someone, think, someone responded to Mrs. Dean's ginger toffee cookies with gingers have no souls. Now, isn't gingers have no souls a takeoff on something they said in Vietnam that Vietnamese had no souls so you could kill them? I don't know. I didn't yeah. hear that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got a few minutes here if you want to have some serious closing arguments here. What do you got, man? Hmm. Well, there's a large shipment of gold leaving Afghanistan. We have uh, what else is happening? You said that, but you didn't really go into it. Oh, no, you don't have to. It's uh, on the Internet. All you have to do is say it, and it, it's either accepted or rejected. Well, I think there's, <laughs> I think the gold is headed for Anacapa Island. That's it. According to this art article, it's going to, from Kabul to, I just read it, Saudi Arabia. Who's and gold? What country stole it from somebody? It appears to be... Uh, is there like a, a gold tracking app? How do you know this? This this story is in um, blacklisted news, and they're getting it from the New York Times. Dubai, that's where it's going. It's going yeah. from uh, so taking gold Kabul to, du to Dubai. Taking gold to Dubai is like taking coals to Newcastle. Man. It's like taking coal to Wyoming. I'm getting the impression from this that it's uh, bank transfers. 
Yeah. And the story leaked out from somebody who was uh, one of the people basically doing the lugging of the of the boxes. Huh. I don't know, man. It doesn't really affect, would be, it doesn't really affect me, but nah. That's a nice story, Jack, but I don't hear my name in it. <laughs> well, what else we have here at Blacklisted News since I'm giving them shout outs today? Futuristic handcuffs would administer shocks and drugs. Ugh. Oh, and they have a picture. Ugh. That could be fun. I could like that. Ugh. I see Eddie Freeze online. Does Eddie Free want to call in for the last two minutes here on uh, Skype? Eddie Free is always fun to talk to. I know, especially if he's wearing his coconut bra and dancing at the big gay dance. Yeah, I actually saw him. Oh, I was talking to you when he walked up. Rem- That's remember debauchery. That? I would never look at that. <laughs> Come on, Eddie. A patent call in. for the next generation handcuffs offers a future in which the detainee can be zapped directly from their restraints or injected with medication, sedative, irritant, uh, a word that I can't pronounce, or other substance. Doesn't that sound like something a sexual sadist would design? Like if that wasn't the state designing it, that sounds like something that like they'd find in the bedroom dungeon of some sex rapist murderer, you know? <laughs> All right, Eddie Free blew it. We're out, man. Thanks for being on, Ben Ben Quaker. Hey, it's been a good cast. Anytime, anytime, my yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah. Say goodbye to the worms. I mean, say worms to everybody. Worms, worms. Thanks, Ben. It's been good. Yeah, nice yeah. talking to you, Michael. Worms, stick on, and we'll have a little post game show here. We'll say what we really think when no one's listening. <laughs>